I've heard several exorcists say that if one gets intimately involved into pinkless killer activities, one opens the door for demons to enter through the body openings, about which, out of decency issues, I prefer not to describe about what particular body opening I am referring to here, because the mere description in detail of this abomination will attract affiliated spirits and equally bad energies. So here to the right you see the exorcist with the book, probably the Bible. Here's a cross. And this is the Prime Minister, um, Der Sturmer uh, of uh, England. And look at his right eye here. And this is from a normal video, not even discussing this. And I, I just picked it up. I just saw it, you know. As I always see these sort of things. I don't know why, actually. And um, I'll put the link of the video in the description so you can see it for yourselves. And it's not Photoshop. I don't do things like that. I wouldn't lie to you. Furthermore, stated by experts that the manifestation of these demons can become visible through so-called demon eyes as turning into red or the appearance of a snake-like slit in the pupil. When this occurs, the possessed host will always beforehand try to hide the manifestation by looking downward. As you can see happening here, the host will always feel the manifestation arrive seconds before, making it difficult for a politician in the middle of a speech or interview with all the cameras focused to shy away the visual effects of a spontaneous manifestation. In this case, the most obvious option is to look down. Together with these images here of Der Sturmer, where he is protesting his obvious affinities, for the Pinkless Killer cause gives us ample indications that he allegedly is one of them. Just look how he's smiling and radiating euphoria and ecstasy all over his face, which normally he barely does when addressing the dumb slaves which might very well be interpreted as a severe schizophrenic attitude when comparing his so obvious double face. So, yeah, look how he's... I've never seen him smiling, actually. Look at him. It's, this is really his, 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 his cup of tea, so to speak. Eh? And so here it says the XLBS. And, uh, yeah, Mr. Stormer. It is well known that Monarch, here in the picture, also has this affiliation with the Pink List Killers. And so did Adolf, with Pink List Killers on all key positions amongst the Nazis, as I've shown you before. I guess the pink list killer head of the SA, Sturmabteilung Stormtroopers, by the name of Ernst Röhm, whom you can see here, would pronounce this word here, so that's this word, with a heavy Swiss German accent as Kehr, you know, like this one here which would be the Swiss Nazi pronunciation 
for this word, which I cannot pronounce due to the censorship, because if I would pronounce it, my video will be removed and censored, while they themselves use it all the time. So, as, so here you see Ernst Röhm. He was a uh, pink list killer. Everybody knew it. Even Adolf knew it. And SA, it means Storm Abteilung. Abteilung, it means detachment, and Storm, it means stormtroopers. And in German, a stormtrooper is this here, where etymologically this name here comes from. It is, it's the same origin. This is Old English, like storm, it means a storm, and this one, storm, it also means a, a uh, storm. And if this uh, Bavarian, like, or German Nazi, if he would pronounce, you know, this word here, he would pronounce it like this. You know, this would be the, um, the, the, the Swiss German way to pronounce this. And this is why I took this T-shirt, because, you know, if I write it down like this in my video, they would probably take my video off. So, I mean, it was already here, you know. So, and together with this bloke here, with, with the XLBS and all this, you know, um, this is, you know, what it, um, it fits together with this. And together with this, of course. You know. Also, I don't want to see Google's propaganda in the description like this here because the thought police machine recognizes my words. So the machine apparently recognizes this word I pronounced. So I don't want to pronounce it anymore, you know. So I'm not asking for this here. So this was on the, my one of my last videos here. Here's the title, uh, November 9th, 2024. And only because I pronounced this, the thought police machine recognized the name and my words, you know. And they're going to use this, you know, against us in the future. This is just the beginning. So I'll only say Der Stürmer for this one here and Monarch for this one here. And again, in French, Monarch is written without the H at the end. And his name actually means Der Stürmer, the stormtrooper. And this one I call Adolf. So like this, the thought control machine of the thought police won't recognize my words. So here it says political asylum in France. And this is, of course, Der Stürmer on Armistice Day. Uh, November the 11th, uh, 2024. The next anomaly, what was Der Stürmer doing in Paris together in the Jeep? As if it were Nazi Germany, 1933. Is he preparing to flee England and apply for a political asylum in France? because he knows that his betrayal towards the English has come out. Desperately, he came to France and asked for help at the alleged pink list killer mafia of Monarch that has been ruling Western Europe for a long time now. So here in this picture here, you see Adolf, Stürmer, and here Monarch. And here it says traitor, wanted for high treason. And I've never seen another politician from another country stand in the car next to the French president on Armistice Day around the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. This never happened before. Why now? And why none other than Der Stürmer? 
So this picture showing from left to right Adolf, Stürmer and Monarch can very well be replaced by this collage here with the identitarian affiliations of the very same gentleman. So here you have to picture here, this is Adolf standing in the Jeep. This is Stürmer standing in the Jeep on Armistice Day in France. And this is Monarch standing in the Jeep. You know, it's the same picture, really. So, and this picture here, here you can see his wife or her elbow in the same colors as this here, of course. And um, I already shown you this in my video from one and a half years ago in February 2023, entitled Kadesh Stans of Pharaoh Macronos 2. You can look it up if you want to see it. So this is a real picture. And I've shown you many more pictures. Um, you know, it was all over the newspapers, actually, in France. You know, it was a big scandal doing this in the presidential palace and he really l loves to hug um nubians like here you know it's his favorite sort of and you can see it's the same smile it's the same smile you know it's it's more than being happy it's like the other word they stole from us that's what they're doing it, he never speak he never smiles to like this to the French people, and he never smiles like this to the English people. They only smile at this sort of occasions. You know, he's like, it's going all behind his ears, just like this one too. And he's all red behind his ears and he's smiling from ear to ear, you know? Well, maybe it needs something else from ear to ear, right? So, you know, you have to picture yourself, these guys standing in the Jeep, you know? It's the same thing. So, Again, it is very important to compare in order to define the enemy, his identity, his future actions, his or her potential threats, his friends, family, etc., in order to fill in the space around to make the blank picture. This is the work I did in the army after my wild days in the field. And I was taught all the techniques which I'm showing you here. So here it says negative imagery, which is one of the techniques. And it's a technique to, uh, for processing the intel. Uh, I already told you a bit about this in one of my previous videos. In the branch of military profiling, I was after my days of military campaigns in the field. We had this technique called negative imagery in order to process the intel to establish a certain profile of the enemy by filling in the known around the profile being the unknown and draw a so-called blank picture in this process of military profiling of the enemy's profile so this is the enemy like mr stürmer mr karl stürmer you know there's a lot of things we don't know about him so we do the uh negative uh, imagery thing and do a lot of comparisons you know so in order to do that all the things we know you know like going to monarch in france and you know being against the english and um, doing pink list killer marches etc we all fill it in here and this is the, the profile of the enemy within, in this case, you know, and this is what we want to know, but we don't know it. So we put all the knowns, we put it all in here until we got it filled up. In many cases, there are blanks around it as well, but it, it leaves a profile, you know. 
So here, this is the negative space here. And this here in the blank is the positive space. We call, you can also call it the other way around, you know, doesn't really matter. You know, it's the, it's a contrast, which is important really. So here in the next picture, the next uh, collage, we see the negative imagery here. You know, like we, you can paint like this chair and the table with a cup on it and everything, but no, this is the negative imagery because we don't know it, you know? So this is the unknown factor. And this is all around in black is what we know. So you fill all this in, in order to get the, the blank picture here. You know, this is the, uh, the principle of uh, negative imagery to process the intel of a certain enemy, you know? And here you see all the puzzle parts, you know, of the enemy, the enemy within usually. And also the enemy, um, the uh, you know the uh, adversary on the battlefield. Like you know, what what is he used to do? This is this is what we know. You know, uh, what are the patterns? What are the uh, similitudes and all this? Um, but you know, so we fill it all up, all around it to get the uh, the profile. So the blank actually is the profile, and we want to know it of a person. You know, and we don't have it, the puzzle part, so we fill in the uh, all around it to do the uh, negative uh, imagery. So we use a lot of comparisons to establish similitudes, accumulate indications, anomalies, coincidences, certain patterns, returning chronological habits, etc., which we filled in around the blank profile, filling in the known around the unknown, which I did in English, French, German, Afrikaans, and the other four languages I speak fluently. I did this until I pulled the negative imagery on the suspected enemy within by my own initiative, the whole thing escalated out of proportions and I had to run for my life, going seriously and permanently AWOL. For those who don't understand AWOL, it means absent without official leave. And here's the negative uh, imagery, probably. And this is the symbol of uh, AWOL. The tags are here, the boots are here, the hats, and bye-bye. You can keep the rest. I found the key to the hidden puzzle parts leading to the very unexpected profile of the enemy within, opening a door which I was not expected to. If you don't compare the lab results, you won't be able to produce the perfect objective, whether it be material or personal. Therefore, I emphasize on comparisons and collages in order to get the real picture, because the enemy within is always hiding his true nature. And without certain techniques, like using comparisons in history, sexual affiliations, hobbies, expressions, fill in the known around the negative imagery, etc., we will never find out because these guys are all parts of secret brotherhoods out of the Knights Templars about whom the French king said that they were Satanists and Sodomites, and the king did not lie. So we need to compare the lab results of the political lab, the military lab, and the historical lab through comparing collages, which I'm trying to do here in order to establish the negative 
imagery. Unlike Adolf, Der Stürmer and Monarch, in the case of the Austrian far-right politician Jörg Haider, whom you can see here in the middle, after having lied for 32 years to the Austrian people, after his death in 2008, it came out in the open and officially that he was a Pinkley's killer, pretending to be a family man with two children. Upholding the perfect sort of national socialist dream of a normal, healthy Germanic man, while secretly living with another so called brown shirt member called Stefan Petzner. So here you see Adolf, and this is the guy I'm talking about. You know, it came out. His name was Jörg Haider. He had been lying to the Austrians for 32 years. Just as this one here, he was, no, he was lying all the time about things and also about being a Pinkless killer, of course. So here it says, uh, you know, and you see the same way that they're dressed up, you know. So we have to do the comparison, you know, to make the uh, negative uh, imagery. You know, the same sexy woolen stocking, stockings and the same leather pants and the same postures like, you know, and in the same sort of brown shirt um, companies, yeah? So here it says, the Austrian Pink List Killer Boys Club, because they're all Austrians. You know, this is an Austrian, this one, you know. And here it says, are you going to dominate me or shall I, well, dominate you? I'll explain you in a minute, you know, why I cut it off here, you know. There was no more place. So... Why this here? Are you going to dominate me or shall I dominate you? Well, because sodomy is the essence of hierarchy. Either you F up your subordinates or you get F'd up by your superior. And these guys here from the boys club technically get a hard one out of harsh military hierarchy because it reminds them of what they do when the lights go out in the barracks and all this comes out of the knights templars the, the french king didn't lie you know the knights templars were sodomites and satanists so this line here i wanted to write down the entire phrase but then I would have needed to pull up another line right over their sexy woolen stockings, which would be awfully pity, spoiling all the fun. Well, the woolly fun, that is, as we are literally being pulled the wool over our eyes. I guess that's why Sasha Cohen, the Jay Walker comedian, had this Austrian pink list killer character called Bruno. And Bruno means brown in Italian, as in brown shirts, who in this case here were all Austrian pink list killer brown shirts, just like Bruno. We all recognize the same Nazi hot pants, right? Here in yellow. Because yellow means coward, as Nazis were and still are yellow cowards. Ain't that so, Mr. Stürmer? I guess the Bruno movie only makes sense if you understand this, and that Bruno or Bruno means brown shirt, being an Austrian Nazi pink list killer in his Nazi hot pants. Otherwise, if not, I must say, watching the Bruno movie was quite a disgusting experience. In German, Austrian, 
and Swiss German, the umlaut, two dots on the U, makes it sound like U instead of the Italian U, as in Bruno, with the umlaut it should be Bruno. Supported, supposedly to give it visually a more Austrian appearance. I'm not sure if the public has understood this delicate Bruno connection to the Austrian pink list killer Nazis in their hot pants, like Adolf here and Jörg Haider. This is probably the unique way the jaywalkers revenge the injustice being done on them by the pink list killer hot pants Nazis of World War II with humor. I agree with the jaywalkers that the whole thing is so sad and so utter mad crazy that sometimes you just need to laugh about this utter madness because a normal human being can't possibly grasp this all. Sometimes laughing can be the only reasonable thing to do when things pass the human com capacity to comprehend. So here you see all the hot shots, Adolf, Jörg Haider, uh, Bruno in yellow, same hot pants, the same hot shots here, and again Adolf. So Hey, Mr. Starmer, you understand what I mean, eh? It's probably your most favorite film of all times, eh, Mr. Stormer? So, when I punch this here, and I'm not going to read it out loud here, you know, um, I might not be able to sleep anymore after, afterwards. Yeah, You can read it yourself here, you know, just punch pause. So they call them the Haider's boys, you know, like uh, Hail Haider, you know, Hail Haider. So, and now let's have a look at this here. So this is the guy. So, you know, I'm showing this, you know, to compare it with uh, Der Stormer in England right at this moment now, you know, and uh, that, you know, sometimes it's very rare, you know, it comes out that some of these, uh, Nazi leaders, you know, these uh, dictators, and that it comes out, you know, that they are pink list killers, you know. And um, so it doesn't mean anything that he, that uh, Der Sturmer, that he has a wife and all that, you know, like this guy and, uh, you know, the monarch, you know, and uh, we must have a look at the... Uh, you know, the negative uh, imagery, you know, to, to make the whole picture, right? Yeah, and you see, if I scroll it down here, you see in all these newspapers, which I'm not going to open up, you know, I don't want their cookies and all that. You now they're all talking about it, that it came out. And probably one of these days, one day, we will read the same thing about um, Der Sturmer, the dictator in England, you know. So, and it goes on and it goes on, you know, page after page, all this, you know, and I'm not going to pronounce it. You can read it yourself, you know. So, he can uh, read about him, you know, he was the, uh, for 32 years, you know, he was the, the leader of the Freedom Party of Austria, the FPÖ. Well, what kind of freedom? Probably sexual freedom, right? And um, so, you can read it yourself here. Just punch pause. And uh, you see here, uh, he was married to Claudia Hoffmann. I don't remember that name, you know, Eva Braun. She was working for this photographer of Adolf by the name of Hoffmann. <laughs> you know, they had two daughters and uh, he was married to her un until his death. That was in 2008. And um, they kept it secret all the time. Well, I mean, what did the Knights Templars do all the time? They were very secret, you know, just as their offspring, the Freemasons, they were f secret uh, brotherhoods, very much brothers, eh? 
with uh, nice, sexy woolen stockings and all that, you know. So, of course, you know, if it's all in secrecy, well, they keep the, their pink list killer stuff. They keep that secret as well and very, very good, you know. They're very good at it. So there, there will never be any proofs, you know. So we have to be smart, you know, and do uh, follow the techniques with the uh, collages and comparisons and um, uh, make ourselves the um, the negative imagery, all these sort of things, you know. So now oh, there you can see him again in his uh, sexy outfit there. So here's the guy that, uh, you know, this was uh, what I showed you before. And this is his name. You know, you can read it yourself. It went far beyond friendship, they said. <laughs> and I'll tell you more about this name. You know, so ER, just like uh, Der Sturmer, there's somebody doing something like a baker or a butcher. You know, and I'm going to. Tell you some more about this part, pets, because this is not normal German. This is Swiss German, and I know what it means, and I'll tell you what it means. If you just be patient for a minute. Well, Arnold, of course, another Austrian, he, uh, he also had something to do with it. Well, what did he do as being the governor of California, consider, you know, concerning the pink list killers, right? Eh? He gave him all the rights, you know, to adopt babies and all that, buy him in the internet, and uh, that's Arnold, eh? The word pets, as in his name, Petzner, means bear in Swiss German. And the western part of Austria, called Vorarlberg, consists of ethnic Swiss where his name probably comes from. Petzner, that is. The boyfriend of uh, this one here. The Austrians call the ethnic Swiss of Western Austria the Xiberger. Berg means mountain and Xi in Swiss German for have been. As the Swiss, for instance, say, bin Dorksee. Which would be in high German, bin da gewesen. Hmm, Swissy again. Petzner. So here you can see the uh, map of uh, Austria. Actually, it was a bit wider going all the way to here. But, well, Mr. Hotpens here wanted to be in the picture, you know. So, what can I do? If you say something against pink list killers or Nazis, you got problems with the law. You can't say anything, you can't do anything against them. So, well, I just let them in the picture and I cut off a big part of Austria, you know. And here it says, pets, it means bear. And I will tell you something incredible about it later on. So, in Swiss, Swiss Germans, this one here, this is Vorarlberg. Here it says here, Berg means mountain. For, it means before, and Al. That's probably another part of Austria. So before Al, maybe this is Al. And um, the Xiberger, you know, also Berg means mountains, the, the mountaineers, Berger. It's all mountaineers like uh, area. And this is then for Alberg. Well, they probably also say like pets, just like in Swiss German, although many Swiss Germans, they don't even know of the word anymore. And um, so here's Switzerland, starts here. This is uh, Bodensee, a lake, big lake. Here's the Liechtenstein, the stone of light, you know, or kind of light. You know. And also, like um, Heinrich Himmler, the head of the SS, he was an ethnic Swiss. These two, they are ethnic Swiss all around Switzerland. I, made it, I showed it in my video, The Swiss Beast, Home of the Devil. And his parents, they came from here. I think his mother was from Bregenz here in Austria. And his father was from, uh, I thought it was Zingen or something like here, next to each other. So um, Himmler was an ethnic Swiss, you know. And as we've seen in Swiss Wisconsin and um, also the, the Swiss center of London, you know, they don't integrate. You know, they stay Swiss.
Once a Swiss, always a Swiss. You know, once a Swiss, always a Swiss. So, yeah, so this is some about, you know, the other pink list killer of uh, Mr. Hot Pants here. And his name was Petzna. And, uh, which is very important, what I'm going to explain to you now. So here you can read some more about for Alberg, right, which is here. The flag is, I think it's the same as the flag in Alsace, which is also, they're also ethnic Swiss in the buffer zone around Switzerland, red and white, which is also the red house and the white house of Pharaoh, of course. And here's the concept of three, three circles, where the circle by itself, it represents the compass, and so does the concept of three. And where's the concept of four, the square? Well, here's a square, and here's a square. So it does say square and compass in their coat of arms. It's all there, Pharaoh. And there's a lot to read about it here, the history. Here, following World War I, there was a desire by many in Fort Alberg to join Switzerland. You know, the same as in 2013, they tried it again. They even had like propaganda posters here. The Confederates, which are the Swissies, it's a confederacy, helped brothers in peril, the Swiss poster of the pro Fort Alberg movement advocating for an accession of Fort Alberg. Uh, to Switzerland in 1919. So they are ethnic Swiss, as I told you, and the name Petzna uh, is most likely from there. You know, the guy, uh, the other pink list killer, um, boyfriend of uh, Jörg Haider. And uh, there was something about the, I hear the language. Um, it says the, um, well, owing to their location isolated from the rest of Austria, most Vorarlbergers speak a very distinct German dialect that other Austrians might have difficulty understanding you know, because it's Swiss German with words like Petz, you know, and Petzna. Since the dialects in the rest of Austria from part of the Bavarian Austrian language group, whereas the Vorarlberg dialect is part of the Alemannic dialects continuum. Alemannic dialects are also spoken in Liechtenstein, Switzerland, as Swiss German, Baden-Württemberg, that's the south of Germany, the southwest of Bavaria, and the Alsace region of France, what I just told you. Well, then there's a lot more to, uh, this is the Alemannic language group in Switzerland, southern Germany, Alsace, for Alberg, Bavaria, and all of this, and also northern Italy, actually, and also the uh, the French Jura. Uh, there's a lot of ethnic Swiss there. The buffer zone. I already explained that to you. So here you can see the proofs again all over. It's in the colors. It's in the logo. It's in the coat of arms. It's in the language. It's it's everywhere. Yeah. Also, Rudolf Huss the commandant of Outwick called his wife mein liebes Spetzel, my dear little bear, which I read in the book here, Hans and Rudolf, which I read in Italian by the jaywalker Hans Alexander, who arrested the commandant of the Outwick concentration camp in 19. 46. So here you see Rudolf Huss. Here it says Rudolf Huss. And this is what he said. Mein liebes Petzel. And this is Swiss German. This is not German. Petzel. And um, maybe the Swiss Germans would say Petzli. Huh? But it's uh, Petz. It's Swiss German for a bear. The Germans don't use this word. And here it says the Outwick Commandant. This is Outwick because of the censorship and the dictatorship in which we're in. I'm not allowed to pronounce this uh, word. You can read it here, maybe. Otherwise, I would take off my video and only the Triple M, 
they can talk about this and pronounce it, I cannot, you know. So there was an in I slept here once in front of the outwick here, right right here, a little bit more here, in my tent. I made a video about it. So Rudolf Huss was an ethnic Swiss from Baden Baden in the south of Germany and buffer zone around Switzerland. Thus speaking Swiss German to his wife inside the Outwick concentration camp and giving her a Swiss pet name inside Outwick. Well, you wouldn't like to know by what pet name Jörg Haider and his pink list killer partner called Petzner with the Swiss bear in his name were using for each other all dressed up in those Nazi leather hot pants and slapping each other on their little Nazi bums, just like Adolf himself most likely did. And allegedly, presumably, Der Stürmer here in the middle, and his spell, the monarch to the right, presumably do as well, while getting drunk by the power they exert over the dumb slaves to dominate or to be dominated, as sodomy is the essence of hierarchy. Apparently, as it just said in the website, even the wife of Jörg Haider knew all about it as he was most likely never sleeping at home at his family's place. So it is a common thing to do for pink list killer politicians to pretend to have a wife and family and premeditatedly lie to the people who will never get any proofs together as it's all hidden, the laws of silence of the Knights Templars and the Freemason lodges, and of course their base in the Alps, the Principality. So here you can see Der Stürmer. Here you see uh, Jörg Haider. Well, it has been, uh, it has come out now, you know, in 2008, that he was a pink list killer. That's why he kept a pink tie on. He's keeping his hands to himself, you know, his whole energy is like, oh, yuck, you know, what's this woman doing here? Like, you know, and here to him too, you know, his fingers sticking out. He's not giving a real hand like, you know, and this is, of course, a monarch. And it might even be very well possible that the real masters in this game um, are the witches here, you know. As in my film Perfidy, with the uh, the beast women creating um, the sort of man, you know, by uh, through um, psychological traumas and dominant mothers. So, uh, of course, these guys are so uh, fed up with the feminine, with the dominant mother. You know, they say, "Oh, okay, uh, well, you know." Put on my leather hot pants, like you know, and raise my arm, like uh, being a Nazi and all this. Be together with the guys, with the blokes, yeah, and uh, turn off the lights in the barracks. And the very moment their spouses turn their backs on them, when shopping or go powder their noses, immediately this happens. This is a real picture when Monarch here knighted this one here, which is the same one as this one. And look at these two here. This is Stefan Petzner and this is Jörg Haider. Look at their hips together and all that. This, these are real pictures. And these here with the AIDS thing, you know, and the hand on his back, tightly holding each other, all these pictures. And look, he's doing the concept of three and with the index and the thumb together, just as Trump is doing, which I've shown you in my video, my MAGA video, make aristocracy golf again. 
Or this one here, the women still haven't come back yet, they're still shopping, you see. Look how they're holding each other, look at the. Here's also the hand. And look how the, the same smile as we saw before. And this one, he's, you know, there's the hand behind and he's even holding it here. You know? Oh boy, are we being lied to, oh boy. Look at this here, this here and this here. You all see the demon eye in the O, like the snake's slit-eyed pupil. And all this Game of Thrones stuff is related to each other. How dominant mothers and tattooed beast women and other psychological traumas create pink list killers and pink list killer politicians serial killers and future concentration camp guards, which is the similarity in between all the pink list killer politicians and concentration camp guards like Commandant Rudolf Huss. In the end, and after I've read it, I gave the Hans and Rudolf book to the Italian colonel and commander of the Italian contingent in Afghanistan, with whom I used to have these pizza parties in the Italian mountains of Liguria, together with the other colonels and generals, which you can see in this video here on my channel Gatsafrats. It's um, eight years ago, 2016, yeah, eight years ago. So here you can see the title and the channel name. I already told you that Commandant Rudolf Huss was a victim as well. How he became a genuine and decorated war hero fighting in World War I at the age of only 16 years old. Then, after the Swiss financed Adolf coup of Munich, only two months after Adolf got financed in Zurich on August 30th, 1923, Rudolf Huss got arrested, got severely tortured in prison for the next 10 years, deliberately making a beast out of a young war hero. Just as I explained you in my video Perfidy, which you can see here, how tattooed beast women are actually creating the next concentration camp guards for World War Three coming up. Concentration camp guards like Rudolf Huss. So here you can see the title. I made it three weeks ago. And there it is. We must see the connections, compare and fill in the negative imagery to find out what's really happening to get the real image. So it's not important to hang and punish Rudolf Huss, but it is important to know who created this once normal man, compare, search for the anomalies, and fill in the negative imagery for the profiling in order to track the powers behind, so this horror won't be repeated. By merely beating up and consequently hanging the Outwick commandant won't provide any guarantee whatsoever for history not repeating itself. Through severe and deliberately inflicted psychological and emotional trauma, the beasts of tomorrow are deliberately being created as in the case of Rudolf Huss, as in the case 
described in my video perfidy. Here in the next picture, you see Der Stürmer's underwear and where it says the FBI laundry list. And as these four letters, which I don't want to pronounce, uh, it says labor in connection to it. So this is connected, these two. I suppose the L here in these four letters, it stands for labor. So this here must be like labor grooming Britain territory or something like that. And we see a lot of indications here. They don't give us any proofs, you know. So we have to go to the indications, like here to the left here, and of course here to the right with the four letters, labor, and all the pink colors, and here the prime minister, the Sturmer. Therefore, we must decide on the massive amount of indications we have. An FBI profiler chasing a suspected serial killer and in this case, a suspected serial pink list killer would give like 10% probability quota for each valid indication. Like Der Sturmer beaten up for defending a pink list killer when he was younger, as you can read about in that book presented uh, in the internet. So this picture here is very much loaded with information. And um, first of all, it says here, maybe it's difficult to read, it says here, limit, uh, 30 minutes, limit with an E. So he must have been in France here. And um, the old backpacks, you know, like from the 70s or 80s and you see this guy here sitting here with his legs like a woman well i wouldn't sit like this you know it would give me scrambled eggs you know like an omelette and so this is an indication this must be the pink list killer friend uh, whom he defended you know and here in this picture here we see a skull which is a symbol for the um, for the freemasons and who also related to demons and all this and remember the demon eye he showed you know with the slit in his eye so this is der stürmer and this one here as well and this is probably this guy here the same one as this one here and you see the guys they've got their uh, their heads turned away from these lovely young women this one here and this one here. And they even got a, 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 a skull of death in between the males and the females, you know, and it's all, they know exactly what they're doing. And Satanists are also, they're always using mirrors, you know, like reverse speech and the mirror. You know, remember what the French king said, sodomites and um, Satanists, you know. And who are in these uh, uh, Templar, Templars orders. And then the shades in a room, you know. Why shades in a room, you know. It's all black and weird stuff. You know? So, yeah. Oh, no. a, the FBI profi profiler would give 10% for this here, the information here for the negative imagery around the profile which we are building here now. So here you can read it if you punch this in the uh, search machine here. And then the triple M, again I say it one more time, that's for uh, the Masters Mega Media. I call it the triple M. And uh, where well, you can all read it. I don't want to read it up all loud for you. You know, these sort of words, I don't want to pronounce them. And also the machine, the thought, mach the, the thought control machine will recognize it, take away my video maybe, and, uh, and, and put some uh, propaganda for all this in, my, uh, in the description of my video. I don't want it. So you can see it's all over, you know. And we just saw the picture of the, uh, of the alleged uh, pink list killer, the one in question here.
der Stürmer on Armistice Day, November the 11th, 2024, teaming up with alleged Pinkley's killer, the Monarch, adding up to 20% probability, about whom you can see more in the previous videos of mine. So here you can see the fire. This is a real picture. Uh, the fire of the unknown soldier at the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. You could say this is the fire of eternal damnation at the height of his uh, sexual or organs, probably. Yeah. Here's Der Stürmer. And here he likes to hug a naked man. There are many pictures of this, you know, especially Nubians like this one here. I made a video about this with many, many pictures. These are real pictures. There's no Photoshop or anything. They're all over the uh, Triple M, actually. And um, so here you see the dumb slaves obeying all this, you know. So you want to take orders from all this here? Really? Are you serious? So, or you want to die for them, like the unknown soldier here? You know, you see the flowers here, or some of it. So, here you see him teaming up with the alleged uh, Pinkless killer here, who does all these sort of things all the time. So, you know, that's uh, another 20%. Altogether, 20%, Mr. Sturmer. There you go. Der Stürmer attending pink list killer protests, 30%, Mr. Stürmer. So this is augmenting the uh, probability of his uh, profile being a pink list killer up to 30%. And this is the way to do it. This is official. Der Stürmer, his friendship to admitted pink list killer Lord Wahid Ali, from whom he gets many very expensive presents, 40%. So here it says Lord Wahid Ali, he's a real lord and a Muslim. And this is a real picture. This is... Uh, he's really, really posing like this with this on. And I suppose he's a real lord and he's a pink list killer. So I, I guess this is what they mean with this. I heard this word before. I don't want to pronounce it. And I guess this is what it is, you know, being a lord and a pink list killer. Then you get this all together. And well, look, look at the claw he's having here. And look at his eye, you know, the eye and the claw, you know. Well, 40% probability, 40 percentage um, of the uh, Der Stürmer is uh, having a um, alleged uh, pink list killer profile. So here you can see about it, Lord Wahid Ali. And um, is the Labour peer behind Sir Keir. And, uh, You know, he's, um, look here at this donation scandal. And, uh, you know, giving uh, presents and uh, a place to live and accommodation and all that, you know. And I suppose, you know, it's, uh, it says he donated more than half a million pounds to the Labour Party. You know, I hope you can read it. And, uh, you know, I guess that uh, only pink list killers amongst each other, a pink list killer would only give all this huge amounts of presents only to another pink list killer, you know. So 40%, Mr. Stürmer, der Stürmer tightly holding the admitted pink list killer, Elton John, in his arms. 50% Stürmer. Monarch, also knowing Elton John, 
whom he even knighted. 60% for possible Pinkless Killer conspiracy, Monarch Sturmer Alton John. You see, the, uh, he got knighted here by him, you know, holding hands. Why, why do we want to see all this, eh? Uh, look at the dumb slave here, taking all the orders, with all these things here, and being proud. And look at this here, at his back here. So here you can see the boys' club hugging each other. You know, underneath they got this uh, leather hot pants. You won't see it, but it's underneath, eh? And look at here, at his back. So this is Elton John with Monarch. And here the same, Elton John with the Sturmer. And look at these grinning faces, here, him and him. They never smile like that to us. You know, only when the, when the boys club are they're all together. So this is exactly the same. Left is the same as right. You know, only this is the Sturmer and this is with Monarch. So this is an, an anomaly. And the anomalies, you know, are being used to fill in the known, because this is known, this anomaly, it's a comparison, the same thing happening. And if you see the same thing happening, you know, it should raise all the hairs at the back of your head, in your neck, yeah? And um, this is being used, these anomalies and comparisons, the same things happening in history, uh, to fill in the known in the uh, negative uh, imagery, which makes a negative profile. So we are still at 60% as before. This is the same thing, you know, the monarch also knowing and hugging uh, this one here. I mean, it's a musician. What, what, what's he doing in politics? And we also saw him, you know, with the... Uh, the former president of the Ukraine who killed um, all, who gave the order to bomb and murder um, the Ukrainians, the Ukrainian president uh, who murdered the uh, the Ukrainians in the east, in the Donbas, in the east of, uh, of the Ukraine, which led to the Ukraine war, basically. But of course, Mr. Putin knew all about it. It's all planned, you know. Because that's the area where the Cossacks are. And the Cossacks, they are people, you know, it's a mix of peoples who already hundreds of years ago, they have a tradition, you know, to make their own lives, you know, no presidents, no nothing, you know. So that's, that's why they don't like Cossacks. The, uh, the pharaohs don't. There are Sturmer involved in World AIDS Day. Well, 70%. Here you see the ribbon, and just before with Alton John, and here in Parliament, you see him wearing the ribbon. And, you know, if you're not a pink list killer, you'd say, okay, why bother? It's their own fault, isn't it? You know, they, it started with the pink list killer, killers in New York, which is a fact, you know, and if you don't practice these sort of things, you know, you're, you're not very much likely to, uh, to get it. And if you stay faithful to one woman or man, the woman with a man, not the uh, other thing, then um, you, won't, you won't catch it. But, you know, so this is, again, um, another lead to um, that he is a pink list killer. So 70% chance, probability, that he is a pink list killer. You know, a profile, a profiler, the FBI profiler would give him already 70%, you know. And, of course, we won't get any proofs, so we have to um, look at the indications and the comparisons in history and the, the anomalies to put our own proofs together because these guys are hiding it all. You know, they won't give us any proofs. They're lying, they're hiding. Uh, it's it's an act, you know, and uh, so we have to get our own proofs together, which I'm doing here for you. Der Stürmer sending 100 labor influencers to Kamala the Camel, to MAGA, Make American, America, G-A-Y, again, 80%, Mr. Stürmer. So... 
it says here, MAGA, make America uh, 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 again. So, and here you see him getting out of the airplane, visiting uh, Mr. Biden in, uh, in America. Here you see the dumb slaves here standing here, you know, taking all the orders. And the camel thing is because, I, I have to say this because of the censorship and all that. It's, of course, because of her name. Let's put it that way. You know, it says, almost says camel. That's why all this here. So, because of the censorship. So, and as uh, Kamala, she is 100%, 200% uh, uh, in favor of all this here again. You know, her kind of MAGA, you know, for the pink list killers. So, and as if uh, Mr. Stromer, if he's sending a hundred influencers, uh, you know, for to uh, to influence the um, the presidential campaign between Trump and and Magala, the Dem the Republicans and the Democrats, um, it's another indication for it that he's uh, he's a pink list killer. You know, otherwise you wouldn't do it. You know. And, uh, but of course, it's a game, you know, of course, uh, they all want the same. All these politicians, they want this here, this pink list killer stuff. And Trump and Putin, they're just saying what a big part of the population uh, want to hear. That's all. It's a sort of good cop, bad cop sort of thing. And we got cycles, you know, then there is a cycle, you know, everything is possible. And then you got a very harsh cycle with uh, everything is restricted you know they're doing this all the time all over history this is what it's all about they're all the same you know and of course yeah mr trump he will you know do things you know for the uh for the uh traditional family and all that and um i, gu I guess so you know but it's all part of the game in the end they they all want this here and they take their time you know they know they will they will get there. Um, even in Los Angeles, where she was uh, uh, the mayor, I think, or the governor and the, and the mayor, she made uh, pedestrian crossings, zebras, you know, on the street with all these pink list killer colors in it, not black and white, you know, which is, which is actually Freemason stuff, black and white. But the uh, the pink list killer colors. So all the children crossing the street, they see this, you know, going to school, they see this every day. So and he sort of likes it, you know. And this is uh, why he sent hundred influencers, paid by the uh, the taxpayer in England, um, to um, to support her to influence the U.S. elections, you know. So that's 80%, Mr. Sturmer. 80% probability, you know, he's a pink list killer. It, it, it's written all over, you know, all the events, all the historical, all the secret symbols and the things he's doing, you know, it's all over. And the next indication in the uh, Sturmer profile is that it is a common thing to do for pink list killer politicians to hide their sexual orientation from the dumb slave voters, as it is the case of Jörg Haider and many other who testify. 90% for that, Mr. Sturmer. Uh, it's again the comparison, you know. This guy was doing it, you know. He, he, he was pretending to have a wife and children. Well, they are his children, probably, but he was lying. So, in fact, he presented himself as a normal guy with a wife and kids, and he was hiding this uh, all the time, you know, being a pink list killer with uh, Stefan Petzner, you know, his little bear. And um, so this means that his uh, presidency, or I think he was the chancellor of uh, Austria, or anyway, he was the boss of the... Uh, the right-wing party, that it is invalid. His political position is invalid because he lied to the people. He presented himself as somebody else. It's the same alleged thing with uh, uh, with Monarch. And also this guy here, 
Adolf, and probably also this guy here. The, the um, uh, he's an alleged um, uh, Pinkless killer. You know, we're already at ninety percent here. You know, so I leave it here. You know, I can get to hundred percent or two hundred percent. You know, but um, well, you yeah, also have to do some work yourself, and um, also because of the censorship, I don't want to go to hundred percent, but. You see, we easily get that, you know. There's so many indications, comparisons in history and all the events going on, you know, like this here and this and this, you know, that, you know, they're all pink list killers and they are, they are lying to us. You know, everything is a lie anyway. That makes 90% profiler probability for a suspected serial pink list killer which is a percentage that absolutely concludes the deal. An FBI profiler would put him on the FBI laundry list for conspiracy, terrorism against the English, crimes against humanity, and high treason. Let's put him on the FBI most wanted list, shall we now?